game started. Okay, Anton Strad two. Let's try e4. Yeah, e4. Yeah, let's see. Didn't quite line that up right. There. <clears throat> okay, e4, c5. We got a Sicilian here. I'm going to play an open Sicilian. d4. And then I'm defending the uh, pawn. And now. Uh, Black chooses the knight orf. So, well, let's go back to the bishop g5 line. I haven't played that in a while. This is the kind of the old main line. If a uh, queen comes out here, it can be the poison pawn variation. I think, yeah, f4, queen f3. <clears throat> okay, he's attacking the knight, which can either retreat. Uh, well, the knight can go back to f3, which is sometimes a good square for it. Still in position for a kingside attack and lending support to this bishop. <clears throat> I suppose I should have thought about the move uh, e5 there, because the knight was still pinned, but he could have taken. Plus, he could have just taken my knight. Hang on a second. In this position, yeah, he's, my knight's defended. I didn't have to move it, so yeah, I could have played e5 there, or at least thought about it. Taking and playing e5 is probably probably the way to go. Okay, but now I've got a bishop there, so um, a knight on f3 and a bishop on g5. So I'm just going to castle kingside and then look for the opportunity to push these pawns. <coughs> Looks like I can push on to f4 at some point. Um, the knight is going to uh, take my bishop, maybe. Trade it. I will trade my bishop for that knight. Oh, but this is different. Um, now he's... Um, Threatening to take twice here and mess up my pawn structure a bit. I'm not really sure what's going on. If this knight moves, I can take the bishop and then move my bishop away. Yeah, if he takes my bishop, this is what I wasn't sure about. <clears throat> Maybe I can um, take his knight with the pawn. If I just take back with my queen, queen takes, pawn takes. It seems like that's just better for black because uh, he'll be able to move his knight and then defend his bishop, and my pawns will be messed up. <clears throat> so, oh, maybe, actually, maybe not. Queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. It's black's move, and his knight is hanging. And if he plays knight to d5, I take the knight. Uh, he can take the bishop. And uh, then this knight can move, but it doesn't have uh, <clears throat> any great... Hmm. Yeah, okay, so that's one plan. The other plan is take this with a pawn. And then the question is, does his knight have any great discoveries? Maybe he, he can take on b2, hitting my queen. I can take his bishop, which hits his queen. <laughs> well, I spent a lot of time on that move, but if uh, pawn takes is winning, <clears throat> which I think it's winning a piece, so I don't see a great, great way for black to save the game. Check. Oh, it moves the queen with check. Does that help? Well, the knight can go here then. That means so we can win the exchange. But after knight takes, rook takes, I mean knight f2 check and rook takes f2. Oh, the 
rook is hanging, but so is his bishop. Okay, so he goes for knight takes b2. Now, the question is, um, can I take the bishop here? So what the material situation is still even, right? Three pieces. So I'll have a piece. He'll take the queen. I'll take the rook with check. King takes. So I get two pieces for the queen. Oh, but then I get the knight too. So I get actually... <coughs> Because this goes with check, check. It, it buys me a tempo to take his knight. So now I've got um, basically a rook and two pieces for his queen, which is um, usually good enough. Plus, I'm threatening uh, the king here with rook to uh, rook to d8 threatens uh, drastic stuff. Yeah, well, he blocks that. Good. Okay. <clears throat> Um, is there some move here other than just retreating the bishop? Didn't see it. He's got a bunch of pawns. I guess that's his compensation. So it's like uh, one, two. He's got two extra pawns. So it's sort of like uh, he's up two pawns. I mean, I'm up a piece and he's up a couple pawns. It's kind of, kind of what the material balance is like. <clears throat> Maybe rook to, um, I mean bishop, bishop f2, indirectly hitting the queen. That's what I'm going to think about playing. And then um, I'm putting some pressure on e6 there. I want to do this first before playing rook e1. I want <clears throat> to put the bishop here so I can threaten the queen. And maybe rook e1. Okay, but that hits my knight. Okay, so the knights defend each other. This pawn is defended. He's picking up a pawn over here. Hmm. Okay, but he chose instead to um, develop a rook. Not not a bad choice. <clears throat> I'd like to get my bishop on this diagonal. Maybe knight uh, here. Uh, problem is that uh, gives up this uh, pawn. Okay, maybe rook. <clears throat> rook b1, and after the queen moves, I'll take on b7. And now I'm threatening knight to uh, c6 check. Because the bishop is pinned and that forks the king and the rook. And uh, the other idea I'm thinking of is rook to uh, d1 here. Okay, so that hits my rook, stops knight c6. <clears throat> because he can take with the queen. So let's, um, uh, oh, and he's hitting my, uh, <clears throat> my g2 square, and he's threatening um, bishop to c6. If this knight moves away, bishop to c6 is dangerous. Well, if the rook moves away, too. The knight could move away. Okay. So first, defend the rook. <clears throat> then second, uh, let's retreat the knight, or maybe advance the knight. Kicking the queen. So this knight is loose, this bishop is loose, but it doesn't give him time to play knight to c6, and bishop doesn't give him time to play bishop c6. He's got to move the queen. Queen cannot easily threaten this knight and um, 
And you certainly can't threaten the knight and the bishop simultaneously. So my idea was, can I take on... Um, e6, bishop takes, knight takes, queen takes, then rook e1, skewering the queen and the um, skewering the queen and the king. Yes, I can do that. If I don't get mated. <laughs> uh, my Check. bishop, conveniently my bishop uh, comes back. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so he defends that way. That's That's good. I was thinking of a different order, but yeah, the way he did it, that's probably better. So I'll, I'm only going to have uh, three pawns, and he's going to have uh, four. Wow. Check. Had to get my king out of the hole. Okay, uh, let's, um, if it turns into a race, actually, I have to, um, I have to get my rook in front of the pawn. So let's, uh, cut the rook off, uh, the pawn, cut the pawn off here. Now I'm just going to take this pawn, trade rooks, Check. and then try and win with this uh, <clears throat> outside passed pawn. So this might not be a winning king and pawn ending. It's hard to tell, but it's quite an advantage to have this pawn. Um, ah, but his pawns are not blocked. So I'm going to <clears throat> wait here and see what he does. Okay, he advances these pawns. As long as this king never goes back, then what I have to do is run my king over here. So take here, and then king here, attacking his pawns. And unfortunately, I can't win this. But maybe I can get a draw. <clears throat> should should be a draw. Game drawn. Okay, game drawn. Well, I will do a postmortem as usual. See you guys later. Bye.